Creating videos is a lot of work, but the creative aspect of it is only half the story and creators will need to promote their content across multiple platforms to grow their channel and get views faster. But what if your main platform is YouTube and you don't have time to dabble on all of them? Well, you can still repurpose bits and clips from your original source, aka the YouTube video, and then create new clips that you can then publish and share to other social media platforms so that you can get more traffic to your YouTube channel or even your own product. If you want to learn how to do that, then you should keep watching. Hi, I'm Hugo from awaketech.com and in this video I'm going to show you how you can repurpose content, especially longer videos, to then use on TikTok and other social media platforms. What we are going to do most of the times is to grab a 16 by 9 clip or video from YouTube and then we will convert it into a 9 by 16 which would be the aspect ratio of a TikTok video. So essentially we are grabbing a video that's natively recorded in horizontal and then convert it into a vertical aspect ratio so that it fits TikTok better. Why should we repurpose those videos? If you already have other platforms that you are working on such as YouTube, you can grow your audience faster. Even if you have no subs at all or no followers, you can save a lot of time and you can get more traffic to your YouTube video. The best aspect ratio for TikTok is usually 9 by 16, which is the type of vertical videos that most people watch on their phone. Resolution would be 1080 by 1920, and you want to make sure that the most important pieces of the footage stay in frame or within the borders of your video so that they can support the points you are making while talking to the camera. TikTok will actually allow you to upload videos up to 10 minutes of length but different sources websites and YouTube channels will recommend you different video lengths you can test with your own content and see what performs best for your specific audience I usually stick with videos up to 30 seconds or 60 if they are longer and I can't really narrow it down or there are some points that I can't just cut out because they are important for the type of message that I am trying to get across in that case then I would make up to 60 seconds. This don't necessarily need to be the full length or all of the points that you mentioned on the video, they can be used as just highlights to your videos to get people hooked and then your audience will go from TikTok to then clicking on your YouTube channel link and then watching your videos. First I'm going to show you how you can do this with Premiere Pro which is one of the most used video editors for content creators and we are are going to start there. You will want to create a new project and give it a name. Pretty easy so far. So you drag your video into the timeline, you watch it, you can then create markers to easily locate key moments on your video and that's exactly what you want for short videos, straight to the point, no sugar coating. Then we are going to use a feature which is called auto reframe sequence. You can select everything on your timeline, make a subsequence and name it. You can then right click on that exact subsequence sequence that you've just created and click on auto reframe sequence and then you can change the name to the original plus short followed by the aspect ratio so that you know what you are doing with that timeline or with a specific sequence or subsequence and then you will want to change the aspect ratio to vertical 9 by 16 and click create this option has motion tracking which means that it might not work for all the videos instantly and you might need to actually do some changes in order for it to work properly or you might need to deactivate it altogether in some parts of your clip. Now the next step is adjusting video to stay on frame. In the case it does not you will need to adjust the position by going into the effects control tab and then followed by the auto reframe effect and you can then adjust the reframe scale and the offset. If it's still not working you can always delete the auto reframe effect and adjust the position and scale under motion right at the top. 
Scale of 40 usually does the trick if you don't want to edit clip by clip or bit by bit and you can copy the current effects by using Ctrl C and then you will go to the edit menu or right click and then paste attributes to similar clips and it will save you some time but just remember that it might not work for your specific case which it might mean that you need to do a little bit more of work. Then of course you would add up your bars that you've just created on Canva or on Photoshop and then put them there to fill in the empty space if you don't want to just blur it out. Depending on the video you are editing sometimes you will see some black bars at the top and bottom since the original video was horizontal. To make it easier to the eye you can select the video track on your timeline and then hit and hold alt and drag it to the top track. This will just create a duplicate and then you can nest the bottom video clips and add an effect which is called Gaussian blur. You can just simply just drag and drop that effect over the nested clip that you just created. Then you can play with the values on that effect between 70 up to 150. Another solution I have seen is to simply add bars at the top or bottom and use them as spots dedicated to branding or just displaying additional information that you might want your viewers to know about or even put there a CTA aka a call to action to incentivize your viewers to just hop into YouTube and watch the full clip. You can go to graphics and draw a box on the remaining empty space and take a look at the W and H which is weight and height so that you have an idea of the size that you would need to create those bars which you can do on Photoshop or Canva and then you can simply just put them over your videos and position them on the top and at the bottom with anything that you might want to instead of just going on Premiere Pro and creating everything there because that's a lot of work and you would need to change the text, position it and all of that stuff and so if you create those bars before editing it will be easier for you but of course what you can also do is simply use the rectangle to select the space where the video appears and then you can invert your selection and of course the remaining space would be selected and then you can also put some bars there as well or use that space as you might want to. As for the video export settings you can keep your preferred settings that you use for all of of your videos you will want to make sure that the resolution is 1080 by 1920 and you can do that by just typing in that same resolution or you can click on match source and that would be it you can then create a preset to use these settings on future videos mine would be called YouTube to TikTok and it is pretty simple then when you do this with other video or when you are repurposing other clips all you need to do is click on that preset for the specific video format that you are using which in my case is H.264 and then the preset is there, you click on that and then you don't need to worry about everything else because the settings will be auto filled for you. And then you hit export and that's it, you have your final video. If you want a free option then Canva might be a good solution. Here's how to do it, you can go to canva.com and open the TikTok video template which you can quickly use by using the top search bar and then the resolution and aspect ratio are are already set up for you then you will want to upload your clip so you can drag and drop that into canva and it will be on the uploads and then you can just drag it into your white canva which is already with the exact settings that you need for tiktok then of course you can resize the video to fit in the 9 by 16 ratio or to fit on that specific canva and then if you want to edit you can go through the clip and click s on the timeline which we'll see on the bottom and you can also change the clip order and then click on the plus button to nest the clips or join them together and of course you can also edit the order between them. After that it would be easy to add bars on the top or bottom and you can also get away with adding the same video on the background and then adding a blur layer on top to emulate the Gaussian blur effect although it would not look as great or aesthetic as if you would do it on Premiere Pro.
Now let's talk about uploading. I usually edit everything before uploading, including the background music, the bars, or additional footage that I might want to include, or even a CTA button, and then I will post the video through the TikTok web or desktop version. But if you want, you can also upload the video from your phone so that you can add additional effects on top of the video, such as text or emojis or anything like that. Then after adding some stuff on top of your video, or editing it through the app you can of course also add the music and after that you can select a cover image and add a title with relevant text sprinkled on your copy or text. It can be similar to the first sentences you would have used on your YouTube videos to attract the viewers or that appear on the Google Meta description, which is essentially the first two sentences of your video description. Because if you are already doing YouTube SEO, these first sentences usually include important keywords that you can turn into hashtags, but feel free to change it a bit because sometimes the text with high volume might be slightly different from your main keywords that you include in those two first sentences. Now you should have your short video ready for TikTok, Facebook Watch or even YouTube Shorts. You can screen record it on your phone from TikTok and upload to other platforms if you want. That's an easy bypass to the TikTok watermark. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Just let me know if you hit a snag or if you have any problem while repurposing your videos. And I appreciate if you leave your suggestions below how you would do it, what you would change to make this process more efficient. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to see more tips for digital marketing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.